weeks ago when the averages were selling off, I thought you had to watch FedEx because this stock is one of the keys to the stock market. Sure enough, once FedEx turned around, the market rebounded like crazy. But as a worldwide shipping company, FedEx is tied to the health of the global economy. Given that global commerce has been slowing of late, I was worried that these guys might be having a rough quarter. Sure enough, when FedEx reported after the close today, the company delivered an 8-cent earnings miss off of a 3.11 basis with weaker-than-expected sales to boot. And management talked about how the international slowdown is hurting them worse. Yes, they cut their full-year forecast for the second quarter in a row. Stock got slammed in after hours trading. But i got to wonder, at what point is the worldwide weakness already baked in? to FedEx share price. Let's take a closer look with Fred Smith. He's the founder and chairman and CEO of FedEx. Learn more about the quarter where the company's headed. Mr. Smith, welcome back to Mad Money. Thanks, Jim. I appreciate you having me. Okay, Fred, so here's what I'm thinking. I'm listening to your call. I take a little different uh, perspective than the analysts who I do believe want the money shown to them right now. <laughs> I see the yeah. consumer doing great. I actually see the corporations doing great. Fred, I see the government's going crazy. I mean, what the heck? Isn't that really the weakness <laughs> in the business? Well, you know, that's a tale of two stories, Jim. The domestic business uh, is pretty good, although we put some new uh, expenses in place to meet the demands of the e-commerce market. Specifically, we opened up a couple of enormous hubs in Pennsylvania and Connecticut, and we went to a six-day-a-week, all-year ground operation. And uh, so those are a bow wave of expense. And then our international revenues were not quite what we had hoped. So we had anticipated about $6 billion in uh, increased revenues for the fiscal year that ends May 31st. We're going to end up with about $4.5 billion. But we are seeing some green sprouts now on the international side, and we're optimistic as we go into FY20. Let's go into those green sprouts, because on the call, you actually mentioned some pretty... Uh some pretty positive things about Europe. And you also talked about maybe things getting a little bit better in Asia. Obviously, I don't want to be too granular. If we're going to grade you by the week or the month or even the next three months, we may miss a bigger story. Isn't it true that if you don't get past Brexit, if you don't get past some sort of China deal, that it's going to be a tough year for FedEx? We just have to expect that because you are, in the end, levered to world trade. Well, we certainly are levered to it. Uh, but on the other side of the coin... Some of the things that we've done, like our integration of TNT and some of the programs we have in Asia, should mitigate some of that. But no question about it, Jim, if there's not some solution to Brexit and some resolution of the China-U.S. trade dispute, it's unlikely to see much global growth in the, uh, our fiscal 20 or the remainder of calendar year 2019. I think people feel worldwide that we have to be, we have growing e-commerce. I think people are still kind of surprised that uh, when is TNT going to be fully integrated in the setbacks there? Is some of that just related to structural? Some of it was 2016 when you had a terrible cyber attack, the worst ever for any company. But I, sometimes I begin to wonder whether Europe is just a real hard place to do business for everybody, including FedEx. Well, when we bought TNT, we announced that it would take four years to do the integration. There were hundreds and hundreds of IT systems and hundreds of hundreds of facilities that needed to be consolidated and thousands of ground and air routes that needed to be put together. So as you mentioned, in June of 2016, TNT was hit by an enormous state-sponsored cyber attack. It would not have survived had it not been recently bought by FedEx. So that certainly was a uh, a big uh, rock in the middle of the road, but our integration of TNT will be largely complete when we end up FY20, which is next May uh, 2020. Now, I, I do think, I mean, I understand the pa patience issue. I think if it weren't just the fact that if it were just Europe and TNT integration would be fine, but it is difficult to try to figure out what's going to happen with China. Well, there was a moment in your call where uh, those of us who were optimistic that the president's uh, initiatives could move some business out of China might actually help the situation, maybe give more leverage to China. I did not hear that on your call. What I heard is China's so big that you just can't get out of it. You can't get out of their clutches no matter how quickly you move. That is the case, isn't it? It's absolutely the case because China is the manufacturing bastion of the world. And there are certainly companies and customers of FedEx that are trying to migrate things into Vietnam and Thailand and down to Indonesia and, and Malaysia and so forth. But uh, China is an enormous place with an incredible infrastructure 
for manufacturing. So it's going to be a very, very big part of the world economy in terms of manufactured goods for years to come. And any change is going to be on the margin. And that's why China and the United States need to come to a deal because it's a good thing for both parties. I thought at the beginning of the call you talked about uh, Amazon and how unimportant you talked about how it's 1.3 percent. Why keep referencing Amazon? I don't think anyone really expects at this point Amazon to come in and uh, become and hurt your business. There's so much business going around. Fred, it's the most defensive part of the call. I don't know why you do it. Well, part of the reason is because on the 16th of February, this network had a program basically whose headline said Amazon is coming into the transportation business and it's going to hurt FedEx and UPS. And it was uh, quite a quite a provocative uh, piece. We were the only people that agreed to be interviewed on the on the the uh, show. Uh, UPS didn't. The Postal Service didn't, and Amazon agreed to, and then they backed off when they found out we were going to uh, to appear on the show. So we certainly don't mean to be defensive, but we do think we need to answer uh, provocative uh, questions when they're raised, including those brought up by CNBC on that program. Well, fair enough, but you know that I've been standing by the idea that, that they need you more than you need them if you want that, and you know that that's been the case from the beginning. What I am concerned about, though, is the idea that, let's say the president, this is what my intel is saying, the president's really saying, you know what, we're going to keep the tariffs on in China, uh, and we'll make a deal, and that that's the real deal breaker. If you get that kind of chatter, uh, it will refute some of the things that you said at the end of your call, which is the idea that maybe things are going to get better with China. Does that delay any sort of turn? Because I think people are really itching to own your stock, Fred. They know that you're the last man standing. They're the one, you're the only one that's built a worldwide network to handle worldwide trade. And if we see a tick up in worldwide trade, FedEx stock goes double. It does It doubles. You and I both know that. So we don't want you to quit. But we, don't, but we also don't want to put any false hopes in. Well, listen, Jim, uh, we're a huge part of the world economy, just as you, as you mentioned. We're, we're handling 14.5 million shipments a day. I mean, enormous operations in virtually every country in the world, except those five or six that are included by the U.S. So uh, we, we are optimistic that there will be an agreement between China and the United States because we know both countries' economies extremely well among uh, the best, I think, of any company in the world. And there's a lot of pressure on the Chinese economy. Don't forget that. We don't agree with the use of tariffs uh, the way the president has done it, and we've said that. Having also uh, made that point, let me say again that the terms of trade between China and the United States need to be changed. They have to be changed. Right. And in that regard, he's doing exactly the right thing. All right. Well, let's leave it at that. Look, I know I've been telling people to own this stock since the 90s. I can't back away from it now. Thank you so much to Fred Smith. He's the chairman, founder, and CEO of FedEx. Great to see you, sir. Mad Money's back after the Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.